But you start to, to go through experiences where you go through the mind training, and you go through the mind training, and then, you know, all of a sudden you just start noticing things. Like, one time I, I was on the internet and this lady that I had never met just started writing emails to me and inviting me to come to an amusement park up in northern Ohio called Cedar Point. And so I thought, okay, that sounds fun. So I went up and I, I met her and her daughter and her her boyfriend and we went we went on the rides and I mean I went on all these rides at this amusement park the kind that I would when I was a kid I would avoid I would never go on things where I got flipped upside down or that went in high speeds you know this and this and because when I was younger I would go on these rides and my stomach was going whoop, whoop, you know loop to loop like when your body is going all over and the stomach starts doing things so I never would go on them when I was a kid. Now I've gone through all this mind training with the Course, and it was so much fun. Just this body was <laughs> going through all this stuff and getting flipped around. I'm like, oh, this is cool. But it's, but it's just like detachment. It's like fun going to an amusement park when you're detached from the body. Because it's like, wow, I used to, when I was a kid, I, would have, I was scared to death of this stuff. I wouldn't even go on the rides, where the, the rotor, where the floor drops out, and all these things. Uh, and log flume, you know, you soak and wet, and then you go whipped around, and you drop off, and, you know, I just, I had a great time. I, I thought, wow, what a cool invitation, including, I think they took me into the, the IMAX kind of adventure, with, you walk into this thing, and it's this gigantic screen, and there's no seats, you have to stand to watch. And they got all these bars there. And they, they put you in, they herd you in there with, into these bars. Then they start the thing on the IMAX, which is like scenes of going whipping around like you're on the back of a, of a ladder on a fire truck that's swinging way out and going over cliffs. And it's not, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a wild adventure. Except I've trained my mind with The Course in Miracles to just see a bunch of images moving on the screen, that they're not real. So, everybody's falling all over me, they're groping, they're grabbing, <laughs> they're grabbing the bar, and, and when the movie's over, everybody's like dizzy, they're falling on the ground, they're groping and grabbing and everything, and I'm just standing there, huh, must be the mind training. <laughs> no effect. Interesting. You just notice. You know, that's the way it has to go with this mind training. It's not like you can't force it. You can't force it. You can't, like, project yourself and say, Okay, I want to be enlightened, you know. You just have to do the practice, moment by moment, and keep going with it, and keep trusting. And then, lo and behold, you start to train, train, train your mind, then you start having these experiences. I was on a boat with a friend of mine, and, and off of Seattle, and we're standing on the top deck, like where, you know, Leonardo and Kate stood, you know, in front of the Titanic. We're like at the top deck, at the very front. I wasn't watching, but behind us was this giant foghorn, you know, with these massive horns, and you're, we're right up in front of it. And we're just sitting there talking and everything in the front deck, and then, then suddenly, without warning, the, they sound the foghorn. I mean, it's this shrill, huge blast, and my friend Beverly, she jumped about, about this high off the ground. She just went, yeah, she just got, because it's this blasting sound, and I'm just like watching this body go up beside me, and going, huh. And then she came down, and she's like, what? you didn't even jump or whatever, and I, you didn't react. And I said, well, yeah, I, I didn't react, because I had undone the belief in shrill, Sounds as if there was something to be defensive about with a shrill sound, like like it could harm you. It didn't harm me at all. I mean, it was just like another sound among sounds, like the whooshing of the water and everything. But this is what I mean by mind training. You know, little by little, when you go through the the workbook or you go through the mind training and meditation and all that, you actually do detach from these beliefs. And then you don't react in a defensive way, because you let the defenses become dissolved away by the Holy Spirit. So you're still seeing a world, but you're just not interpreting it in a fearful way. 
you know, you're not interpreting it yourself as a body, and you're not identifying with the body, and wow, that takes the fear right out of it. If you're identified with mind or with consciousness, <coughs> what's to be afraid of? It's, it's all a dream, it's all consciousness. But if you're still identified with those beliefs of the ego, then you'll be identified with the body, and then that's where practicality takes a whole new thing. You, you, practicality would then be follow your guidance. If you're guided not to get on a plane, don't. If, you, if you're being wheeled in like Dr. Pincus, Pincus uh, and, you know, for surgery, and, and the doctor's talking about her sun pan, and everybody's kind of in a happy-go-lucky mood, and he's like, talk, take this seriously. Like, I'm going in for surgery, I don't want you talking about a sun pan, and, you know, then you, you can exercise the choice of like grabbing onto something on the side and saying, halt the procedure. <laughs> I'm not going to have you as my surgeon. You know, you just have to follow your guidance. With relationships, it's the same thing. You can give your heart, but if you start to, you know, if, if you start to have violent encounters or whatever, do the practical thing. You know, Jesus is not telling you to be a doormat. Uh, you know, follow your guidance. You know, if you find yourself in a desert, leave. He wasn't saying, you know, turn it into a desert party. <laughs> he, he said, leave. <laughs> You know, so, so it is be practical based on where your guidance is and where your belief system is. Don't try to project yourself from A to Z and pretend to be spiritual. That's, that's not going to cut it. That's just going to get you into all kinds of denial and, and repression if you try to project yourself to, I wish I was there, so I'll just, you know, do the hocus pocus and it's just not authentic. And aren't these movies great? I mean, wow, it's like, take me to the movies, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Tell it like it is. Show me what's behind the, the curtain. <laughs> you know, so I can pull the curtain on the ego and, you know, and have a good laugh at the ego instead of feeling like the boogeyman's gone on a, a spree. <laughs> a moment of joy. <laughs> you don't have to apologize for either. <laughs> we like this. You don't have to say sorry. You can just. Oh. Yeah. oh. No. <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Anybody have anything else, or are you ready? I just have some picture from the script is written. How it could be, or like a yeah, picture of it, like when, like we had a fly like on the, up there now, and we know that this um, aim of the fly is going to fly, and it, will, it is very quick. Suddenly it flies, but if we made a, a film of it, and we showed it in slow motion, we would see what there would be a lot of movement to make the, the, the fly fly. And that could be like when the script, with the script too, it just seems, as it, it can happen like this, we can wake up, but it seems to us at, as if it is in slow motion, and that's the script. Do you understand? Can you follow me? And you can make the, the film very slow, very slow motion, or a little bit slow motion, but it's all fiction. Yeah. It's happening like that. The fly is taking off. Yeah? Let's just I have some pictures in my, in my mind. She was with me down in, in Australia and Frank came up from Kangaroo Valley and did the fly <laughs> on the show. We, sp we spent like a half an hour on this on this fly on the, on the white shirt. <laughs> and so and the fly has returned. Yes, there he is. <laughs> now it's the fly on a white screen on the other side of the world. And we, it's still the fly. <laughs> it was really profound, you know, we get into these deep discussions, everyone's like, hmm. You know, after we talk about a fly on a white shirt for half an hour, we're like, yeah. There must be something more. <laughs> you could just see the look that people are going, hmm. I think the secret to my whole reality is in this fly. <laughs> <laughs>